Hello everybody and welcome back. I hope you guys are all doing well. We are going to continue our kinetics and equilibrium lessons today um, with actually talking about equilibrium. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, so far we have talked about energy and reactions, right? Um, and when we were doing those energy diagrams, a lot of the verbiage was saying the forward reaction. And I told you guys we're going to get to reversible reactions later on. Well, that's today. So we're going to talk about reversible reactions and also equilibrium in reactions today. So go ahead and just take a minute and think about what equilibrium actually means. It's a term that you guys have heard before, definitely in biology, if you think about um, transport and um, concentrations being at an equilibrium so or think about um, isotonic solutions does any of that ring a bell <laughs> if not it's okay because we're gonna go over it again today um, so reactions in which the products can react to reform the original reactants are reversible reactions so when we talk about a forward reaction that's the typical you start with your reactants they go in you form your activated complex if you have enough activation energy then you get your products out well if a reaction is reversible those products can be broken back down into the original reactant so you just go from um, right to left instead of left to right. So here's an example. So we've got hydrogen gas, iodine gas, and it reacts to form two molecules of hydrogen iodide, also in a gaseous form. So remember these little um, uh, guys right here, the letters in the uh, parentheses let you know if it's a gas, a liquid, or a solid, which is what you're dealing with in the reaction. But, so this is the forward reaction. So you have your reactants on your left, your product on the right. But then there's a reverse reaction as well, where we start with hydrogen iodide and it is broken down into hydrogen and iodine gas. Okay, so it can go forward and it can go backwards. So what we do to show a reversible reaction is that we use these kind of double-sided arrows to show you that the reaction can go both ways. So we can either have the hydrogen and the iodine starting as our reactants to get our hydrogen iodide as our product, or it can go the opposite way. And anytime you see this little like double arrow symbol, that's gonna be your indication that it's a reversible reaction, okay? Reversible reactions are also equilibrium reactions, and we're gonna talk about that on the next slide. So an equilibrium reaction is a reaction that does not go to completion and in which reactants and products are present in fixed concentration ratios. Now, when we say that this reaction, an equilibrium reaction, doesn't go to completion, it means all of the reactants aren't going to be used up. So we're not going to have a, you know, if we're talking about like in terms of like percent yield, you never have 100%, um, a 100% uh, percent yield because you would never have all the reactants used up to create all of the initial products of the forward reaction because they can go back and forth. And also there are fixed concentrations in which the reactants and the products are present. So some examples of this, we've got uh, calcium carbonate and water. So we've got a solid calcium carbonate plus liquid water plus carbon dioxide gas um, will create Calcium hydrogen carbonate, okay, and it is, again, an equilibrium and a reverse reaction. So you can have the products on the left creating the calcium hydrogen carbonate, or that calcium hydrogen carbonate can be broken back down in the original reactants, the calcium carbonate, the, the water, and the carbon dioxide. Another example of this, you've got two molecules of sulfur dioxide in the gaseous form, plus oxygen gas. Um, will yield two molecules of sulfur trioxide, right, in the forward reaction, but then you've got your reverse reaction where that sulfur trioxide can be broken down into your sulfur dioxide and your oxygen. So anytime, again, anytime you see this, this double arrow symbol, it's showing you that there's a forward and a reverse reaction. So there's this concept that we need to be aware of called dynamic equilibrium. This is when molecules of reactants are being converted to products at the same rate as products are being converted into reactants. And when that happens, we get a constant ratio of products to reactants, which is your equilibrium. 
So your forward and your reverse reactions occur at the same rate. So the same rate that your products are being formed or your reactants are being formed into your product, your product is being broken down back into your reactants. So the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backwards or the reverse reaction. Equilibrium does require something called a closed system. Um, and in a closed system, none of the reactants must escape, right? Because if you are looking at forward and reverse reactions and they need to be at a constant, uh, constant ratio or, um, yeah, just in, you know, that constant ratio, you don't want any of your reactants escaping, right? Because then that reaction rate can be thrown off. Some molecules are lost to the environment in an open system. Remember, energy can be changed, so you can lose energy as heat, um, and then you can have reactants escape, especially if you're talking about using a reactant as a gas. Gases will fill up whatever volume they are in, so they are likely to escape. They can't escape, so gases do need a closed container. Um, but reactions in solution do not need a closed container. So if you think about aqueous solutions, reactants in solution, um, they're not going to go anywhere as long as you have a constant container if they're not in gaseous form. Um, so they don't have to have a closed container. So now we're going to talk about something called the equilibrium constant. Um, and this is a constant calculated from equilibrium expression, specifically using concentration of your reactants and your products. Now if we look at a equilibrium reaction. So this is just basically a depiction of a typical reaction. Um, and it's a relation linking the equilibrium constant, which again is Kc, to the equilibrium concentrations of reactants and products, as well as the stoichiometric equation. Now that's a lot of big words, but I'm gonna break it down for you on the next slide. So basically what we see here with this equation the M, the N, the P, and the Q is basically just the coefficient from your balanced equation. So you guys did balancing equations last week, or the week, the week before last, um, where you find the coefficients that go with each of the compounds in your equations. So your M, N, P, and Q here are basically just your coefficients, and then the A, B, C, and D capital um, letters are your compounds, right? So this could be water, CO2, whatever. This is just a, a general breakdown of what you would see in an equilibrium equation. So now let's talk about how you set up to solve for the equilibrium constant. And you guys are not going to have to actually follow through with the actual calculations. You just need to be able to look at a um, equation like this and be able to set up the equilibrium constant for it. So your equilibrium equation looks like this. So you have K is equal to the products in brackets, and the exponent is going to be the coefficient, so the stoichiometric coefficient that you calculate from the balanced equation. And then that's going to be over the reactants, and again, the coefficients of those reactants. Now, the brackets indicate concentration, okay? And I'm going to go over that in just a second. So take a minute to take this slide in. This is what you're going to have to use to set up your equilibrium equations. Again, you don't have to follow through with the solving, you just have to know how to set it up, and I'm going to work plenty of examples for you today. So note that the equilibrium constant expression has products over reactants. So if we go back, we've got our products over our reactants. The coefficients become the exponents, and then the square brackets are indicating the concentration um, in molarity, so the moles per liter. So if we're looking at this and you see your equation, you're going to have the concentration of your um, compound, so your moles per liter in the bracket. So you have your products on the top, your reactants on the bottom, and then the exponent is going to be the coefficients from, again, that balanced equation. Um, when you are writing equilibrium constant equations, the pure liquids and pure solids are omitted from the equation. And this is because pure liquids and solids have a fixed concentration, which will always be constant. So there's not really a need to include that in the equilibrium constant expression. So if you're looking at an equation and it's a pure liquid or a pure solid, they're omitted from the equation. 
Um, and when doing these calculations, again, you guys don't have to, but you can, you might be given a scenario where you're told what an equilibrium constant is. Um, if K or KC is larger than one, that means the products are favored. So in other words, the forward reaction is favored. So in that particular system, um, it's easier for the products to be made. If K is less than one, the reactants are favored and the reverse reaction is favored. Okay, so uh, just something to keep in mind as we move forward with looking at these equilibrium equations. Okay, so this is the end of the notes. So I'm gonna stop this video right here. I'm gonna create a video where I go through and actually break this down for you. And we're going to set up some of these equilibrium equations together so that you can easily do your independent practice. So once you're done with this, go on to watch those um, guided practice problems because you'll need them before you start your independent practice for the day.